Are you still getting bloated on a low FODMAP diet, even though you're following it perfectly? You're not crazy and you're definitely not alone. I've worked with thousands of women who've had this exact same frustrating experience. They've eliminated all the high FODMAP foods, they're using the app religiously, but that uncomfortable bloating and those symptoms just won't go away. Here's the thing, clinical research shows the low FODMAP diet actually works for up to 86% of people with IBS. So statistically, if it's not working for you, it's likely user error rather than FODMAPs not being an issue for you. But at the same time, it's not your fault because there's actually two crucial hidden traps that you were probably or definitely never taught. So before you do anything else in this video, we need to uncover those traps first and make sure you are dotting your I's and crossing your T's, so to speak. My name is Joe Leach, a qualified dietitian and founder of Diet vs. Disease, the world's largest online gut health clinic. And we help you to resolve digestive issues properly so you can eat freely again, travel without fear, and get your life back. The first issue is what I call the hidden ingredient trap, and it catches almost everyone off guard. I'm gonna demonstrate it to you in a moment with this bottle. Can you guess what it is? So I remember many years ago, I was at the local fish and chip shop with a family friend who was vegetarian, and the server was about to sprinkle this this seasoning on her fries. And I, I was like, oh no, don't do that. She's, she's vegetarian. And the server looked at me confused and, and said like, but this doesn't have any chicken. And I was shocked because this is chicken salt. It's one of Australia's most popular seasoning. The name literally says chicken. But when I looked at the ingredients, not only was there zero chicken, I mean, it's actually labeled vegetarian on the front. And so foods and food labels are not always what they seem because from an IBS and FODMAPs point of view, you'd be forgiven for looking at this product and thinking, well, chicken itself doesn't have FODMAPs and, and neither does salt, so it must be fine. But if we look at these ingredients, we've got sea salt, 80%, then rice flour, then spices, then vegetable powders, onion. So this innocent looking seasoning is absolutely loaded with FODMAPs. And this exact type of hidden FODMAP like sabotage is what catches out a lot of people. Now, I recall it happened to a client of ours, her name was Margaret. She was like a retired nurse who, who was like at her wit's end when she came to us. She was doing everything right, but you know, was still having bloating and diarrhea in the evenings. And she'd been following the low FODMAP diet for three months. Um, she had the Monash app downloaded. She was checking every single food. She was avoiding all the obvious high FODMAP foods like yeah, onions, garlic, wheat, beans, but her bloating wasn't getting any better. In fact, some days she felt worse than before she started the diet. And Margaret was tracking everything in our app, like doing our regular Zoom calls. We could see her food diary in real time and on paper, everything looked perfect. She was eating grilled chicken with rice and carrots for dinner and she was having a small breakfast and that was fine. All green light foods according to the app. But her symptom scores weren't improving, okay? She was getting frustrated and, and honestly, so was I. Something wasn't adding up, I remember. Now, during one of our calls, I discovered she was using a seasoning blend on, on this grilled chicken. I asked Margaret, like, can you read the ingredients list to me? And she said, oh, it's like, it's herbs and spices, nothing fancy. But when she actually read the label out loud, like there it was, garlic powder, I think it was the third ingredient. So she'd been using this seasoning blend like every single day, thinking it was safe, because the front of the package just said, you know, herb seasoning. And so here's my point, and what most people don't realize, food manufacturers use garlic powder and onion powder in like almost everything. Even small amounts of garlic powder can trigger symptoms since garlic is high in fructans, okay? That's one of the key FODMAP groups identified by Monash. But because it's listed as garlic powder or buried under like natural flavoring spices, people miss it completely. So we found garlic powder in her seasoning blend, onion powder in like her bouillon cubes um, for making soup, um, and natural flavors in rice crackers she was eating. And each was adding unexpected FODMAPs throughout her day. And none of them were obvious when you just looked at the front of the package. So here's how to protect yourself from this trap. First, if you're doing this on your own, you need to learn to read the ingredients list. Look for any mention of garlic or onion or their derivatives like garlic salt, garlic powder, onion powder, onion salt. Uh, second is to be suspicious of anything that says natural flavoring or spice blend without listing the specific spices because they can contain garlic and onion too. The third thing is to watch out for stock or bouillon cubes, um, seasoning packets, marinades and sauces. These are the biggest culprits. Now back to Margaret, so within one week 
of eliminating all of these hidden FODMAP sources, her evening symptoms, like they just about disappeared. I remember the relief she felt because she finally felt like the elimination phase of the diet was working how it was supposed to the way everyone else said it should work. And I was relieved too. Now, if you're realizing you might be falling into this same hidden ingredient trap and you want help navigating this, um, comment Sure Pathway below or click link one in the description to learn about our signature for Sure Pathway that helps guide you through this process step by step. And if you're just starting out and you just want to get the basics right, grab our free low format food list using link number two in the description. Now, here's the thing. Even when you master the hidden ingredient trap, there's another trap that catches people out who are genuinely being extra careful with their food choices. I call this the FODMAP stacking trap. So let me tell you about Evelyn. She was about seven years old, retired uh, teacher who was being really careful with her food choices. She was picking only green light foods from the Monash app. Um, every single thing she ate was like supposedly low FODMAP, but she was, she was still getting bloating after every meal. And during our calls, I mean, we'd look at her food tracking together in our app and everything looked perfect on paper. But she was so confused and started to think the diet just didn't work for her. And here's what Evelyn didn't understand and what so many people miss completely. Think of your FODMAP tolerance like a coffee cup, okay? Each person's cup is a different size. Some people have a large travel mug that can handle a lot and others have a delicate teacup that overflows easily. Now, if you add coffee slowly, drop by drop, even the small cup stays fine. But pour in too much too quickly, and even the large mug will overflow and make a mess. And that's exactly what was happening with Evelyn's meals. Each food was like adding coffee to her cup. And I remember she was having small amounts of like avocado, almonds, grapes, chickpeas. Now, individually, each portion fit within a tolerance, but when she combined them, all in one meal, you know, her cup overflowed. Now this is called FODMAP stacking and it catches people out constantly. You might eat low FODMAP oats and strawberries for breakfast and then snack on a few almonds, then have avocado and tomatoes at lunch. And individually those foods seem fine, but the cumulative effect throughout the day builds up until your gut says enough. Now the tricky part is that everyone's coffee cup size is different. Your friend might eat that exact same combination and feel perfectly fine because her tolerance is, is just higher than yours. Just like some people can drink endless cups of coffee and still nap while others would be wired all night. Or how some people like myself can lather hot sauce onto their food, no issues, while others can't even handle a drop. And then the timing matters too. Your gut needs time to clear the FODMAPs from one meal before you add more from the next. So if you eat a moderate FODMAP breakfast and then another moderate FODMAP lunch just a few hours later, you're stacking them before your system has had time to process the first load. And this is why you can't just copy someone else's meal plan. You need to figure out your own personal coffee cup size with FODMAPs, so to speak. Here's how to use the Monash app to avoid this trap and prevent stacking. So don't just check if foods are green or red. Look at the actual FODMAP types in each food. If you're having avocado, which has sorbitol, maybe skip the stone fruits later in the day since they also contain sorbitol. Or if you're having rolled oats, be careful about adding other like oligosaccharide containing foods to the same meal. You also should track your symptoms across the whole day, okay? Not just foods, symptoms as well. This is why we have an app we use with clients to track everything so we can see in real time on our end and it allows us to look at patterns and connect the dots between food intake and symptoms. So back to Evelyn. So during our sessions, um, I helped her to space out her FODMAP intake throughout the day. So in many instances, she could eat the same foods, the same total amounts, but we spread it out so her, her gut could handle them better. And like within you know, several weeks of making these changes, Evelyn's bloating just about went away. She was amazed at such a simple adjustment um, made such a huge difference. She didn't have to eliminate any foods completely either. She just had to be smarter about timing in combinations. And that's exactly what we help people figure out. Your personal FODMAP tolerance and how to work within it without unnecessary restriction. If you want that kind of personalized guidance to master both the hidden ingredients and the FODMAP stacking concept, Click link one in the description or comment Sure Pathway below to learn more about our For Sure methodology. And if you're still figuring out which foods are safe for you in the first place, 
Start with our low format food list. That's link number two in the description. Phew, okay, that was a lot. So let me bring this all together for you. If you're still having a lot of symptoms on a low format diet, despite following it, you know, perfectly, you're likely falling into one of these two hidden traps, okay? So trap number one was the hidden ingredient trap. So garlic powder, onion powder, natural flavoring, they could be sneaking FODMAPs into your supposedly safe meals. And trap number two was the FODMAP stacking trap, okay? So you're eating only green light foods, but you're combining too many of them in one meal or too close together. Now, remember at the start of this video, I said that statistically, low FODMAP works for 86% of people, but that does leave 14% where low FODMAP is not the solution or is at least certainly not like the full picture. And that's because sometimes the real problem isn't just what you're eating. Sometimes it's what's happening inside your body that's making you react to even safe foods. So it could be triggered by like chronic stress and anxiety, uh, what's often referred to as the gut brain connection or a highly sensitive vagus nerve. I'll make sure to link to a video on that topic that will appear somewhere here um, if you want to learn more. But for others, the culprit could be SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which we explore here in this next video. Lastly, be sure to like this video if you found it useful, it really helps the channel out, and subscribe um, so that you can watch our newest videos.